In this video, we'll run through the advanced settings in Negative Lab Pro. Before we get started, some of these settings here, I'm not exactly sure what they do, but I can show you with the exception of toning method and clip method. I haven't seen a lot of difference in my workflow with those two settings. So if you know what those mean, <laughs> you can explain them in better detail. Please leave a comment, let me know. To start off here, we'll start here at the top with engine settings. This is the different versions of Negative Lab that have been released over the years. If you want to use one of the older versions of the software, you can switch back to those here if you'd like. Uh, curve points, I believe, pertains to white balance. Auto is automatically selected. Kind of goes with that saying. You can select smooth or precise. And I did not see a lot of change there. Or if you want to go in and manually adjust the curve points, you can do that. You'll kind of get a little bit of different colors and you can see very minimal changes as we're going through here and we get to two curve points and it really gets a big change one thing to make note of is if you are doing two curve points which i have had to do in times past to color correct scans really off you kind of lose the ability to use these other settings so you'll have to make your adjustments back over in the edit panel or export this photo into to make color adjustments or color correcting adjustments that way. This picture doesn't need to be at two curve points. Um, you can add more curve points. We'll go up and scroll through this real quick just so you can potentially see changes there. I'm not seeing a whole lot of difference. Some photos you'll see a lot, some photos you won't see much. So we'll just keep this at seven curve points. That's where we started. Process order color first or tones first. Again, I'm not exactly sure what this means, but sometimes it makes your colors look a little different. And in this photo, there's not really much difference. And again, some photos you'll see a big shift in color, sometimes you won't. But it takes two seconds to run through this once you've kind of got it into your workflow. So it's worth checking just to see if you can make little refinements that make your photo look closer to what you want it to be. Um, color density, I do know what this is. <laughs> color density is how dense the negative is. So if you have overexposed a negative, it will be more dense. If you have underexposed a negative, it'll be less dense. Um, so you can add exposure, which you can see this brightens the image. You can have just neutral density, so like a properly exposed image, or you can subtract density, and that would be darkening the photo. That would be like if you had too much exposure, you can remove some of that exposure. Uh, for this photo, we'll just leave it at neutral. Eh, no, we'll leave it at add density. That just added some highlights, opened up the shadows a touch. Um, next, we have colored method. This is another white balance adjustment. Sometimes you can't see a lot of change on the actual screen, but if you look up here at the histogram, when we go through these, you can see what adjustments are actually happening. So I'll just run through these quickly. Uh, this is linear fixed linear dynamic mid-tone weighted for some reason on this version of the photo i'm not seeing a lot of change here oftentimes you'll get huge adjustments here but more refinements just to kind of tighten things up adjust color cast a little bit uh toning method i haven't seen much difference between standard and vintage so i normally just leave it on standard and the clip method i have not seen much difference there so I just leave that on protect color balance. I have no idea why this is being wonky. Sometimes negative lab is kind of weird. Maybe I'll need to close this or cancel it and start over. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes you have to do that. Um, so we've made it through the engine settings here. That's just a few more adjustments you can make to refine your adjustments, clean up your image, make things look a little bit nicer. Positive copy settings are the adjustments you can make to your TIFF copy if you choose to make a TIFF copy of your image to use in Lightroom or to continue editing in Lightroom so your sliders aren't reversed. Um, you can come through and you can select if you want a TIFF or a JPEG. TIFF files retain more information, you have more data, so more flexibility for editing. JPEG files are smaller, but they have less data to work with, so you don't have as much room for adjustments. Bits, I don't quite understand how to define this, but the higher the bit or bits, the more information is saved. So if you need to save space, you can change that to eight, but if you don't, if space isn't an issue, quality isn't an issue, uh, just go with higher quality. If you want, you can compress this file. Color space, if you want to adjust those, that is your options there. 
and placement. This just is how the TIFF file shows up in Lightroom, either as a stack where you can unstack it so you can see it, or a subfolder. I believe one of these is the TIFF copy from the basics video that I couldn't find. It just magically appeared when I started recording this video. So you can tell this is the TIFF copy because it says positive TIFF. And if we jump over to the develop module here, if we go to the exposure and go to the right, everything goes normal. It brightens like it should. And if we go to the left to darken, it also goes dark versus the photo we were just messing with. Uh, if we go to the exposure to the left, it should brighten. Yeah. If we go to the right, it will darken, which is opposite controls. So that is the advanced panel in Negative Lab. In an upcoming video, we'll run through the basic tab and the advanced tab to color correct this image or a image so we can use all those settings at once so you can see how to convert and color correct an image in Negative Lab Pro. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Um, so this is not a good example of this. <laughs> I'll have to cut that part out.